let's talk about how to UV this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit tab and we're going to type in auto and that's going to bring up the game dev auto UV. So we're going to go ahead and plug in our geometry result into this node and then make it visible. And of course, you're not going to see anything because we don't have our UVs like visible on our object. But if we do want to visualize those UVs, tap uh, tab and then start typing in visualize UVs and then hit enter. We're going to stick this one out to the side. We're going to drag the end of this node into the top of this one. And then when we make this one visible, now we can start visualizing our UVs on our object here. So for example, we can turn on visualize islands and this is going to give us our islands that are broken up. We can also turn on visualize seams and they're a little bit hard to see now. So let's go ahead and make this 0.05. There we go. So we can start seeing them dial in. Of course, you can just take the slider here and just make them bigger or thinner. As you make them bigger, you see what I think it's running. It looks like a poly wire operation. You know what? Let's talk about that for a second. So we'll uh, type tab and then type in poly wire. And then we're going to take this geometry result and we're going to plug it into poly wire here, make it visible. Then you see it's taking every single edge of our polygon mesh here and turning it into an actual piece of geometry tube. And there's a lot of different uh, operations you can run on this, like the wire radius is basically the thickness here. And you can also do the wire radius down here in the slider as well. So that's kind of a cool node. You can check that one out if you want to. We don't really don't need it right now, so I'll go ahead and delete that. But I thought that was interesting uh, way to do uh, visualize seam thickness here. But we'll go ahead and crank that down just so we can see uh, where our seams are. Now, if we want to see our UVs laid out flat, what you can do is in your viewport here, do spacebar 5, and that'll go to your UV window here. You can do spacebar 1 to go back to your perspective view. If you want to see both of them together, do control 4. That'll split it up into two viewports. And then on this left viewport here, I'm going to do spacebar 5, and there's our UVs. So we can look at our UVs as we're looking at our object here. If you don't want to look at the visualized version, just simply go over here to your auto UV result and make that visible. Now you're going to see when I click on the visualize, it's big, right? Uh, and our actual UVs are down here. What that's doing is uh, for this grid tiling, it's scaling up our UVs. So let's go back to our visualize node here and make that visible. Uh, so our grid tiling here, if we take this and drag it down, it's making our UV smaller, which is making our grid size bigger. So that's why that's happening. So you can dial in the grid size, whatever you'd like here. Uh, and then you can visualize that result with the visualize UVs. Or if you just want to look at your UVs, you can just tap on this object to make it visible. And then you'll see your UVs are laid out in the zero to one right here. If you want to get out of this view, hit control one, and that'll send you back to just this one single viewport here. Uh, and then go back into that view, just hit control four. That'll split it back up in the two views, one with your UVs and then one with your object here. So now that we're looking at our UVs, the first thing you're going to see up here is these tabs right here. And these are going to be the different UV algorithms we're going to utilize on our objects. Down here at the bottom, these are global parameters that are based, that are controlling the packing type that we're doing. So we're going to go ahead and change this. You can choose spectral or angle based. We'll keep it on angle based. And you can also choose the orientation mode. Right now it's set to optimal. Uh, if you want to do a minimum amount of packing, basically if you hover over this, well, it's not going to tell you very much right now, but I'll tell you in these UV packing options, the best one down there at the bottom is going to try a, a lot of orientations. Uh, optimal will try around 20, axis aligned will try four, and minimum will try one. So if you have the time to spend and you can hit best, uh, it's going to take a few seconds, but that's going to give you the best packing uh, available to you for the objects that you have in your zero to one or the islands that you have in your zero to one. If you're just iterating through and doing test bakes and stuff, I think optimal is just fine. However, if you are batching through a bunch of objects through this node network, I would say keep it on best. Sure, it's going to add a couple seconds, but you might as well get the best pack available. But for now, we're going to keep this on optimal. Uh, packing iterations here might give you a slightly more optimized result. And then the island padding is going to be the distance between your islands so that you can build in a little space between them for mipping purposes later when we go to bake our textures out. All right, let's start making our way down this list. Uh, so we'll start over here on the left-hand side of these tabs here. So we'll start with shortest path. And like it says, the shortest path finds the shortest path between two points. It starts at an end point. The path between those two points isn't necessarily determined by just the length of the path, but also the cost that it accrues for visiting certain locations between those two points. Um, this first option right here is the collapse distance. That's going to merge some of your smaller shells with larger shells. So you have fewer overall shells. So if you crank this up or you, you don't want to crank it up maybe, but maybe you type in like 0.5, you're going to see we're getting fewer shells. 
And that also works hand in hand with this number of paths. So if we go back down here, so I'm going to turn on the visualize. So we have this selected and visualize turned on. And then I'm going to click this auto UV node. So we can see our UVs here, but we can update the auto UV settings here. So for example, we have the number of paths set to 25 and we you can see we're getting some distortion in here. Those grids are getting small to large along this piece here. If we change that to say 50, we're getting more islands, but we are getting distortion or lack thereof. The convex multiplier and concave multiplier, again, it's just pretty much what it says. These are gonna track the seams based on either the concave or the convex surfaces. And same thing with the occlusion multiplier, it will start attracting based on where an occlusion map is. So that's kind of an interesting way to hide your seams is to attract where it cuts based on where the occlusion would be. If we head on over to cluster, you might notice as soon as we click on these tabs, it's gonna give us new UVs. So it's completely redoing our UVs based on the tab that we have selected. So this is my shortest path, here's my UVs. Cluster, here's my new UVs. And you know what, for cluster, let's try a different model. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back into ZBrush and we have this photogrammetry model that we created. If you're familiar with my YouTube channel, we went over this photogrammetry process using reality capture and photo scan in this playlist here, it's 27 videos. And we basically created this object right here using photogrammetry. So I'm gonna send this over to Houdini. We're just gonna send over visible and go back into Houdini here. And you'll notice what it did was it placed a new GOZI mesh within this node structure here. I'll go ahead and delete this one. And so we're just gonna take an eyeball at this one. So here's our photogrammetry mesh. Let's go ahead and again, we'll type in tab and then start typing in auto UV. And we'll go ahead and UV this mesh. And we'll do another UV visualize so we can kind of see what's going on here. Turn on visualize islands, turn on visualize seams say 0.1. So the visualize visible and then our auto UV selected. Let's go over here to cluster. And now you can see what cluster is doing is equally dividing up our mesh into groups and points based on their position. So we get a nice patchwork look and it is, you know, very little distortion. It's doing a pretty good job. So what we can do is we can change the number of clusters. So for example, we change this down to 10. And just like before, you may get more distortion, the lower number of shells. Uh, and if we change it up to like 50, less distortion, but more shells. Right down here, the normal weight, normal blur, and random seed. Uh, normal weight and normal blur, it's gonna take the normal of the object when it calculates its paths. And then of course, random seed, you can just change this value to whatever, and it will go ahead and re-slice up your mesh based on a random value. Anyway, we can go ahead and just delete these out of here. And we'll go back down to this mesh, we'll make it visible. I'm sorry, we'll make the visualize UVs visible. And if you ever want to uh, just frame your object in here, do spacebar G, and that'll go ahead and throw it right in the middle of your view here. Let's go over here to axis aligned. And again, just like the cluster, you have a normal blur amount. So this will start creating seams based on axes, axes of geometry. And uh, if the more you crank this normal blur up, let's say we go up to five, it's going to start also merging stray shells together. So that might be another option for you, depending on the object type that you're making. This very last one here is UV unwrap. By default, it's gonna be set to six planes. You can drop that down as low as four or as high as eight. I think six was a pretty decent start. So we'll go ahead and keep that. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit control one just to go back to just our perspective view here. And instead of visualizing my UVs, I'm just gonna go back to my object here before we start talking about vertex normals.